Acids, bases and salts. This is section 6 of unit C2. We can tell if a substance is an acid or an alkali by testing it with universal indicator. Universal indicator turns a different colour depending on the pH. And we use the pH scale to show how acidic or alkaline a substance is. Green tells us that the pH is 7 or neutral, the pH of pure water. Red, orange and yellow indicate that the substance is an acid and has a pH below 7. Alkalis have a pH above 7 and turn the indicator blue or purple. Examiners are fond of asking which iron is responsible for a low or a high pH. It's the hydrogen iron, H+, that makes the solution acidic, that's low pH, and the hydroxide iron, OH-, which causes a solution to be alkaline. What makes an acid an acid? It's the presence of the hydrogen ion, H+. Three common acids which you need to know about are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. All of these produce the hydrogen ion when dissolved in water and so does citric acid which you find in tangphastics. If you find it difficult to learn the formula of the acids, you can work them out from your table of ions on the data sheet. More of that later. Do you know the difference between a base and an alkali? I thought not. Bases neutralize acids. Metal oxides and hydroxides are bases, such as Na2O and MgOH2. Alkalis are just a special type of base which dissolve in water and produce OH- ions. So all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis. You could draw a Venn diagram for that. State symbols are a quick and easy way of telling us what state a substance is in. Not its emotional state, of course, but whether it is dissolved in water or if it's a solid, liquid or gas. AQ means that it has been dissolved in water. It comes from aqua, which is Greek or Latin for water, one or the other. S is for solid, L for liquid and G for gas. Simples, as they say. When you're asked for the ionic equation for neutralization, this is what you need to write. H plus plus OH minus arrow H2O. That's all. The H plus is from the acid and the OH minus is from the alkali. Hey presto, they react to form water. Stick in the correct state symbols and you'll really look as if you know what you're doing. Acids do loads of reactions. They love to get involved. So, acid and metal makes a salt and hydrogen. Acid and base makes salt and water. And acid and alkali, which is just a type of base, remember, they react to make a salt and water too. I hope you remember learning about the reaction of an acid with a carbonate in the C1 unit. And we also recapped this reaction a couple of slides earlier. There's some equations too, and I put the state symbols in as they help us to work out what we would see in a reaction. Hydrochloric acid plus magnesium makes magnesium chloride and hydrogen. The state symbols tell us that magnesium is a solid and that HCl is a solution. And when they react, a gas is produced. The solid magnesium disappears and an aqueous solution of magnesium chloride is formed. Sulfuric acid and copper oxide react to make copper sulfate and water. We can tell that the copper sulfate is formed in solution again because of the state symbols, although the equation doesn't tell us that it has the most beautiful blue colour. Hydrochloric acid makes chloride salts, sulfuric acid makes sulfate salts 
and nitric acid makes nitrate salts. The metal in the salt comes from the metal or from the base or alkali that the acid has reacted with. It's pretty straightforward to work out the formula of the salt from the table of ions you're given on the data sheet. Make the most of your data sheet. There are suggestions that students in the future will have to learn these ions. The first example is calcium sulfate. From the data sheet you'll see that the calcium ion is Ca2+, and the charge on the sulfate ion is 2 minus. The charge is balance, so you just need one of each ion, and the formula is CaSO4. Magnesium nitrate has the formula MgNO3 2. That's because the magnesium ion is Mg2+, but the nitrate ion is NO3 1 minus. We must have two nitrate ions to balance the charge on the magnesium. And we put the nitrate ion in brackets to make it clear that we need two nitrate ions. Remember that the charges on the ions must balance out so that the compound is neutral overall. There are various ways of making soluble salts and you have to be able to explain how to do it. We'll start with the reaction of acids with metals. You have to choose your metal carefully. Unreactive metals won't react for a start. These are the ones below hydrogen in the reactivity series. And very reactive metals would react too violently. But this method works well with magnesium, zinc and iron. Look at the equation for the reaction of magnesium with hydrochloric acid, which has the state symbols. Magnesium dissolves and a gas is produced. We know all the acid has reacted when the magnesium stops fizzing and no longer dissolves. So a suitable method for making magnesium chloride crystals would be 1. Put hydrochloric acid into a beaker. 2. Add magnesium piece by piece until no more magnesium will be dissolve and there is no more fizzing. Thirdly, filter off the excess magnesium. Then, place the filtrate, which is magnesium chloride solution, into an evaporating dish. Using a Bunsen burner, evaporate half the water off. Allow the rest of the water to evaporate slowly to give crystals of magnesium chloride. We use a similar method to make salts from insoluble bases. A really common experiment is to make beautiful blue copper sulfate crystals from copper oxide. Here is a very similar method but with different reactants. Start by putting sulfuric acid into a beaker. Add copper oxide bit by bit until no more will dissolve. There won't be any fizzing though because no gas is given off. Warm it gently to speed up the reaction and stir. Filter off the excess copper oxide. Place the filtrate, copper sulfate solution this time, into an evaporating dish and once again using a Bunsen burner evaporate off half the water. Allow the rest of the water to evaporate slowly to give crystals of copper sulphate. Making salts from acids and alkalis is more tricky. We have two solutions so you can't easily see if either one is in excess. And we want an exactly neutral salt solution if we plan to use the salt on our chips. We need to use an indicator but we don't want indicator flavoured chips either, so we have to find a way of getting rid of it. Look at the method carefully. In a beaker, combine equal quantities of acid and alkali, in this case hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, and stir. Then add three drops of universal indicator. Next, 
Add acid or alkali dropwise with a teat pipette until the neutral green colour is seen. You now have two choices. Either add activated charcoal to absorb the indicator and then filter it off, or record the exact quantities of acid and alkali used and repeat the experiment without an indicator. Then put the salt solution into an evaporating dish, evaporate half the water with a Bunsen burner as before, and finally allow the rest of the water to evaporate slowly to give crystals of sodium chloride. But don't put it on your chips, it'll stress your chemistry teacher out. You also need to know the method for making insoluble salts. Some salts don't dissolve and if you mix two soluble salts together you may get a precipitate. For example, silver nitrate and sodium chloride will react and form a precipitate of silver chloride. It's easy to get the pure salt, filter it, rinse it, then leave it to dry. Making precipitates is a great way to remove some dissolved metal ions from solution, raising the pH by adding an alkali, which contains the hydroxide ion, don't forget, can form an insoluble hydroxide. Look out for the solid state symbol, a sure sign that a precipitate will form. Effluent, that's industrial waste water to you and me, is often treated like this to make it safe to go into rivers, and so is our drinking water. Ammonium salts are used as fertilizers. Ammonia, which is a gas, is dissolved in water and forms ammonium hydroxide, which is an alkali. Spot the hydroxide. This can be reacted with an acid to make an ammonium salt and water. Ammonium hydroxide and nitric acid will form ammonium nitrate and water, of course. Ammonium hydroxide and sulfuric acid will form ammonium sulfate plus water. And which acid do you think we use to make ammonium chloride? Next it's electrolysis.